PBP is full. Let's talk about that and some other news in this edition of PBP Tips. Okay, I wanted to do a quick PBP Tips from the bike room today. Just a few things to talk about. Uh, one, probably top on my mind and, and probably on many riders, is the news that's coming out from the ACP that pre-registration is full. So if you have not already registered for PBP, uh, pre-registration is officially full. Uh, and it seems like what happened was uh, they've increased the number of pre-registrants. It, it went up from a little over 6,000 four years ago. There are 7,600 riders pre-registered for PBP this year. So that's a big increase. I'll we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but one thing that it really means is that if you didn't get in the first I guess four waves or so of pre-registration for having done long brevets last year, 1,600, 400, 300, et cetera. Uh, if you didn't do any brevets last year and you were waiting for all those waves to, to go by and, and then pre-register, you're probably not gonna get in. So if you didn't do at least a 200K last year and take advantage of the pre-registration deadlines for the earlier rides, uh, you're, you're not gonna get into PBP this year. So we can look forward to 2023. A uh, couple other things about those numbers, though, as I said, it went, the number of pre-registrants went up from a little over 6,000 in 2015. It's now 7,600. So that, that's a big increase. And that's going to mean probably, uh, well, obviously, more riders on the road. And probably, and I think especially for the 90-hour group, which is always the biggest group, uh, probably more congestion at the at the controls. The controls are only a certain size. They're, the places where they're held uh, are a certain size. The cafeteria in Car Carre is only so big. They can only fit so many people in it. Uh, so count on more people at the controls and probably a little bit more time to get through them. So it's going to be a really good idea to pay attention to the rest stop management issues that, that I've talked about in some previous issues and uh, really concentrate on getting in and out of those controls as quickly as you can. Another thing that's interesting from the pre-registration numbers is that everybody's numbers have gone up except the French. One correspondent on one of the, one of the email lists that I subscribe to uh, has been reading some of the French message boards. The French writers are not very happy. They went from a little over 2,000 pre-registrants in 2015 they're down to about 1,600 this year. So their number went down, everybody else's went up. Uh, the US, by the way, is in fourth place. So it's um, France, uh, I think England, Germany, and then us. So we're, we're still in fourth place, which is where we were last year. So a few other things to think about now that uh, registration or pre-registration is over. One is obviously that you need to do your brevets. So uh, I've done my two and 300 already this year. I'm doing my 400 tomorrow, and then I've got a 600 scheduled about a month after that. So if you haven't already thought about what your brevets are gonna be and put them on your calendar and plan to head for those, now's the time to do that because you gotta finish your brevets in order to complete your registration on time and, and then be officially signed up for PVP. Some other things you should be thinking about now, uh, one is lodging. So, uh, you know, we talked about that in a prior edition. Lodging is going to be an issue based on where they put the start. There's not a whole lot of hotels in Rambouillet. Uh, you can still look for uh, like Airbnb options and, and other similar kind of services in Rambouillet. Um, I have a place there uh, that I locked down about six months ago when they first announced where the start time or where the start town was going to be. But uh, if you haven't already figured out your lodging, now's the time to do that. It is gonna be difficult, and I haven't seen anything coming out of, on the message boards yet about uh, additional trains or additional transport to get people from either Paris or um, saint Catherine or, or any of the other cities further to the east out to Rambouillet uh, in time for things like the 84 hour start at five o'clock on a Monday morning might not be quite as difficult to get out there uh, for you know the Sunday afternoon and evening starts of the 80 and the 90 hour groups. 84 hour group, uh, you're gonna have a problem probably getting out there on time 
just in terms of when the trains are and can that many people even fit on the train? Uh, are they even planning on this influx of riders trying to make that, that trip out to Rambouillet at that time in the morning? Another thing to think about is uh, plane tickets. Now, I've made my plane reservations. Uh, I was very pleased to find that the price I was paying round trip to uh, Paris from San Francisco, which is where I fly out of, uh, substantially less than it was four years ago. I, I recall paying almost twice as much as I did this time. So when you're looking at plane tickets, a uh, few things to, to think about. Obviously, price is one, uh, where they're going to connect you through and so on. Uh, look at the fine print because you can often find low priced airfare, uh, but then they'll charge you a lot to carry your bike on the plane. Uh, I recall one of the airlines, I think it was Lufthansa, wanted over $200 per leg. I think it was like $260 or something there and back to put your bike on the plane. Other carriers are lower. Um, Delta, if you bought a slightly more expensive ticket, had a very much reduced price to get a second large piece of baggage on the plane. So, so don't just look for the lowest priced airfare. Make sure you're comparing airfare and the cost of getting your bicycle over there. Uh, and as I said, almost all the airlines are going to charge you a lot because it's a large bag. They're not particularly heavy. Uh, you can almost always get your bike in the box uh, for under 50 pounds, uh, but they're large and they just charge a lot for oversized baggage. Another thing to think about when you're looking for air travel, there are some low priced or low frills airlines. Uh, be careful when you're looking at those. There, there was the airline out of um, wherever it was, Iceland or Finland, that just went out of business about a week or so ago, uh, one of the low priced European carriers. So there are some low-priced airlines, uh, but go on TripAdvisor, go on Travelocity, etc. Read the reviews. Some of them are notorious for uh, canceling flights at the last minute or just you know going out of business, which is not a good thing if you're counting on using them to get over to France. And other than that, this is just you know in, in addition to doing your brevets, this, this is a time of year to uh, probably start ramping up your training a little bit. I don't say a whole lot about training in these videos. There's lots of other people who do a much better job of that than I do. Uh, but it is a time to start thinking about, you know, I've got to start doing longer rides. And um, once you've done your longest brevet, the other challenge later on in the year, and it's going to be that way for me between, say, June and August, is just staying in shape. Uh, you've done all your rides. You've gotten in really great shape. You've done your 600K brevet. And now you got like two months to just keep on riding. So maybe think about doing some more brevets, maybe uh, some longer brevets. Personally, once I do a 600k brevet, I'm done because I really don't like riding that distance. So once I do that and I qualify, I'm done with, with long rides until I do the 1200 in France. So that's it for this edition of PVP Tips. I'll be back again with another one. I'm planning on filming and photographing the 400k brevet tomorrow. So few days or so after that, once I've had a chance to recover and uh, get everything into the computer, I'll produce a video about that and talk about lessons learned on that ride. And I will see you in the next edition of this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. I obviously encourage you to subscribe so you hear about new editions of this as it comes out. And I appreciate everyone watching. Definitely appreciate all the viewers out there and your comments. If you have your own ideas or, your, or any questions, put them in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to respond to those. Thanks a lot, and I will see you on the road.